Denial is not a long-term strategy. And we have been denying what we have to face. Let's be honest with each other because today's system is not honest to the workers and it's not honest to the taxpayers. Welcome to this Reality Report special investigation. I'm Julio Rauseo. I'm speaking today with Wayne Matson via video Skype link in Washington, D.C. Wayne Matson is a Washington, D.C. based investigative journalist. He's a frequent contributor on Russia Today, BBC, CNN, and ABC, just to name a few. 20 years of security experience with the, as a naval officer. He's also worked with the Department of State and the NSA, the National Security Agency. Wayne is also a member of the Society for Professional Journalists and the National Press Club. Wayne Matson, thank you so much for joining us live from D.C. Hi, good to be with you today. Good to be with you too. Uh, and this special investigation will be dealing with Rahm Emanuel, who's getting set to run for mayor of the city of Chicago. Uh, but Wayne, you came to the city of Chicago in uh, the summer of 2010 during the heat of the Rod Lagojevich trial. What made you come down to Chicago uh, in the midst of the Blago trial? Well, I've been following uh, uh, Governor, ex-Governor Blagojevich's chief tormentor, Patrick Fitzgerald, for a number of years, ever since Fitzgerald was working in the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of Manhattan, specifically on the World Trade Center bombing in 1993. And uh, Fitzgerald, in that case, uh, along with his, his cohort in crime, uh, and I do say crime because evidence of, of that particular crime was covered up by Fitzgerald and his cohort who was the US attorney for the uh, uh, Northern District of New Jersey one guy named Michael Chertoff who who came back to haunt us again um, but it was very clear that in 1993 critical evidence was suppressed by uh, Fitzgerald and Chertoff evidence that would have led uh, to the government of Sudan, which at the time was harboring a guy named Osama bin Laden. Uh, but the problem was to pin 93 World Trade Center bombing on bin Laden would have been to implicate the CIA because up until 1995, bin Laden was still on the payroll of the CIA and Britain's MI6. So we have in Fitzgerald somebody who's very much wired in with the intelligence community who's done their bidding for a number of years who is not a clean prosecutor he's extremely dirty he's not Elliot Ness he's more like Al Capone well that fits right into Chicago and you mentioned in your May 19th article on WayneMatsonReport.com just about you coming into uh, Chicago and you also mentioned that Obama President Barack Obama and Rahm Emanuel along with Patrick Fitzgerald, had a pro quo agreement. Can you discuss about that agreement? Well, it's, it's very obvious that uh, Fitzgerald is carrying the water for Obama and uh, Manuel. The whole takedown of Rod Blagojevich had to do with eliminating a potential bothersome witness to the uh, to the to the rise of Obama and also of Emmanuel in uh, Illinois politics, especially Obama, who became president of the United States from basically a career uh, as an Illinois state senator, a career of relative obscurity, but a career nevertheless that seemed to uh, show that Obama had friends in high places. Uh, after all, from 2002 when he was defeated uh, in the primary by Congressman Bobby Rush, uh, Obama had this uh, mercurial rise in, 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 in national politics uh, from the time he defeated uh, his opponent in the uh, race for the U.S. Senate in 2004 to uh, the, the meltdown of uh, 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 Jack Ryan, the uh, Republican candidate for Senate, uh, over uh, over uh, released uh, divorce papers that were supposedly sealed about a very messy divorce uh, to uh, the White House. Um, we see in Obama somebody who's um, who's risen uh, along with uh, people like Emmanuel, uh, and uh, I think the the reason for that is is that there's been protection uh, of Obama and Emmanuel by 
people like Patrick Fitzgerald, who, after all, uh, we have to look at his own background. His father was a doorman for the wealthy elite in, in the upper uh, east side of Manhattan, and his son, Patrick Fitzgerald, continues to be not only a doorman, but a doormat for these same vested interests. Now, there were 500 hours of wiretap phone conversations between Rob Lagojevich, but somehow not, not all the 500 hours were released. As we continue in our special investigation, we'll figure out some reasons why those uh, uh, wiretaps weren't released. But why do you think, Wayne, Patrick Fitzgerald would team up with Obama and Emmanuel to try to take out Rob Lagojevich? It seems like he is the middleman that knows too much, and they're trying to silence him. Oh, it's absolutely the case. And Fitzgerald, of course, is just nothing more than a uh, he, he, he's a water carrier for the for the elites, uh, for the people that put Obama in power now are, are behind trying to put Emmanuel in uh, as, as mayor of Chicago, possibly with future national ambitions beyond being mayor. Uh, but we look at uh, uh, the 500 hour uh, 500 hours of wiretaps. Uh, it's quite clear that we know that Governor Blagojevich has, has a salty uh, way of speaking. Uh, that's not why he was indicted. Uh, if that were a crime, Richard Nixon would have been impeached years before Watergate. Um, but w what this is, what this is, is uh, has to do with selective prosecution, something that Fitzgerald masters in. Uh, we saw it in his indictment of uh, former Governor George Ryan very selective because Ryan commuted those death sentences and cited police and prosecutorial misconduct in Chicago and in, in, in the state of Illinois and, and and who was Ryan talking about he was talking about Fitzgerald's good buddies in the cop shops around the state including Chicago and the prosecutor's offices <coughs> these people have a way of getting back at you when you go after their vested interests so what we have in, in, in Blagojevich, there's obviously, there were references in some of these phone calls that would have been of great interest to the jury. But, but the judge, Judge James Zagel, who's a very political judge and who will be the same judge uh, in the retrial of Blagojevich this spring, when in fact there should be a change of venue, at least a, a change of, of, of the trial judge, but we don't see anything coming down from the Justice Department on that because Eric Holder, the Attorney General, is every bit as much of a political uh, lickspittle for these vested interests as is Patrick Fitzgerald. Um, so uh, any references uh, between, uh, say, uh, uh, Blagojevich and Rahm Emanuel and other of these players uh, uh, about uh, Rahm Emanuel and Barack Obama's extra extracurricular activities which are long-standing in Chicago, uh, were, were kept from the jury uh, because, of course, the judge said uh, a lot of this, and, of course, Fitzgerald agreed with this and pushed this, that this has not, no bearing on the case. Well, I think the fact that the president of the United States and a guy that hopes to be the next mayor of Chicago were members of the same gay bathhouse in North Chicago are very relevant to the, to, to, to the case against Blagojevich because... Again, this is eliminating somebody who knows way too much to shift the attention off of those who are probably just as, as corrupt, if not more corrupt, than the accusations against Blagojevich. And that's, that's Obama and Emmanuel. And we'll get to those extracurricular activities in a second. It's also good to point out that the voters of Chicago should know this type of information before uh, voting for a, a mayor of one of the largest cities in the country, the third largest media market in all the country. The voters need to know uh, this type of information. Rahm Emanuel getting set to be uh, to run for mayor of Chicago. S not many people around the city that are educated enough know about Emanuel and his entire family. They're a very powerful family, the Emanuels, including his two, his two brothers. His father has shady past. Can you go in length about the Emanuel family and their rise to power? Yeah. Yeah, the Emanuels are basically the uh, the um, uh, Emanuels' uh, uh, parents uh, emigrated. Uh, well, the father emigrated from Israel. He was a member of uh, of a Jewish terrorist organization 
in Israel that was in part responsible for carrying out the bombing of the King David Hotel in Jerusalem, which killed uh, British, uh, British nationals, um, uh, Palestinian Arabs, and Palestinian Jews in 1946. I spoke to uh, uh, someone whose father was a member of the British um, uh, uh, forces in, in then the UN mandate of uh, Palestine, and, and Benjamin Emanuel, who later came to the United States and became a pediatrician in Chicago, the father, was uh, his specialty was buses. Uh, not that he drove a bus or worked on buses. His specialty was blowing up buses, especially buses with a lot of British uh, military and policemen on board. Uh, so this is the father of the, uh, of the person who wants to be uh, the next mayor of Chicago. Now... Now, we can say, well, you can't lay the sins of the father on, on, on the son, but we have, a, we have a pattern with Rahm Emanuel, with his, uh, his mannerisms, uh, his, his uh, take-no-prisoners uh, uh, political policies, his crudeness. Uh, we have an individual who doesn't seem, he's never, he's never shown any remorse over what his father's done. As a matter of fact, Rahm Emanuel is a veteran of the Israel Defense Force himself during Desert Storm uh, when uh, uh, U.S. troops were going over to Saudi Arabia and Kuwait to fight against Iraq. Uh, Rahm Emanuel went to Israel uh, to join the Israel Defense Force. Now, his brother, Ari Emanuel, you've mentioned in a couple of articles, uh, including the May 18th and June 2nd article, article, Ari Emanuel, who is portrayed as Ari Gold in the HBO hit series Entourage. Ari Gold, a super Hollywood agent, works for William Morris in Denver. And more recently, on a couple of nights ago, they hosted a uh, fundraiser at the House of Blues with Jennifer Hudson, a Chicago native who is also a client for William Morris Endeavor. Uh, Ari Emanuel has helped his uh, brother out tremendously in getting uh, Hollywood contributions for his f uh, campaign fund. Can you elaborate more on that, Wayne? Well, true. Our Ari Emanuel is a super agent. Uh, apparently, uh, every bit as crude and obnoxious as as Rom, if that's possible. Um, again, as you say, you know, there, there's a, 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 a ca character uh, was patterned after him, this Ari Gold. Uh, but uh, I think this is just indicative of the entire Emmanuel family, that what you have are people who are uh, basically uh, uh, take no prisoners, um, sort of like um, uh, a kosher version of the Sopranos. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, the other brother, of course, Ezekiel Emanuel, is a big uh, 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 advisor to the Obama White House on health care, and he, he was seconded from the National Institutes of Health. I would also point out that the father, Benjamin Emanuel, uh, after uh, Emanuel became chief of staff to Obama, uh, uh, his father said something about, uh, of course, uh, uh, my son, is he, he's, he's not an Arab, He's not going to be cleaning the floors in the White House like some Arab. He's the chief of staff. Again, we saw no real, uh, we saw a regret from uh, Rahm Emanuel, but no real apology. Uh, it's quite clear that this, this entire family is very racist in its views um, and uh, uh, has nothing but disdain towards um, uh, Arabs and Muslims. And I think uh, even when we saw Emanuel run for Congress in 2002, I was up in that fifth district, and uh, which uh, it, you know includes uh, Wrigley Field, and it was qu quite clear that a lot of people uh, uh, in that district uh, thought that Emmanuel might be one of the uh, Iraqi Christians, the uh, the Assyrian, one of the Assyrians, the Chaldeans that live up there. And of course, he made no he made no attempt to try to clear that up. He was more than happy that some of the uh, Arabs, uh, Arab Americans, and Arab Christians in that fifth district thought he was one of them, uh, and uh, they they mistakenly voted for him, uh, thinking that he was one of them. So he's even tried to hide his own identity uh, from people. I mean, this guy's very cagey. Uh, I also went back and looked at a report in the Chicago Tribune back in the in, in nineteen in the nineteen sixties, late sixties, and apparently his father, when he was a pediatrician, there was a young a, a, a pregnant mother in his care and the young baby uh, was born and they couldn't get into a hospital because apparently it was the weekend 
and, and Benjamin Emanuel wasn't working, and, and, and the baby died in the car looking for a, a, a hospital with a maternity, with the maternity ward to deliver the baby. So uh, the whole family, I mean, it's, it's just uh, from the uh, very poor bedside manners of the father, the pediatrician, the ex-terrorist who blew up buses in Palestine and, and hotels to, uh, uh, to, to the kids. Uh, this, like I say, this is a this this is like a kosher version of the Sopranos. And another interesting note on Ezekiel Emanuel, he's uh, been a big proponent for the legalization of euthanasia. And doing my research, I found that the Greek word for euthanasia means good death. And he's also has called for universal health care. So I know he was a big fan of the health care. Uh, bill that passed uh, recently in the White House. Again, we're here with Wayne Matson of WayneMatsonReport.com. Wayne's live in Washington, D.C. Wayne, Rahm Emanuel's influence in national politics, how did, become, how did he become so powerful, so revered by uh, many of those in Washington, D.C.? Uh, we, we recall he's been chief of staff twice, uh, once under President Clinton, and then more recently with President Obama. He was a U.S. representative of the 5th District in Chicago, a big-time political player. How did he rise to power in national politics? Well, he started out as a, um, uh, as a, as a campaign worker on, on various Democratic uh, uh, campaigns, most of them uh, presidential campaigns back in the 80s. Uh, the John Glenn campaign, uh, the uh, Paul Simon campaign in Illinois when they were running for president. Uh, he, he turned that into an entree to national politics. When Clinton was elected president, he winds up in a job in the White House, but immediately uh, 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 went at loggerheads with the first lady, Hillary Clinton, who basically tried to have him fired. Uh, he wasn't fired. He was he was lateraled over. He worked for Mac McClarty, the chief of staff at the White House. And then in the late 90s, towards the end of the Clinton administration, he left um, he left the White House and got a job with this big Wall Street investment firm, Wasserstein Perella, where he made 16 million dollars, uh, which uh, of course helped uh, fund his future run for the U.S. Congress. Uh, and uh, so he's. He's definitely been a player ever since uh, as a, as a, um, uh, a U.S. congressman. Uh, he made it quite clear he, he wanted to become Speaker of the House. Of course, that didn't happen uh, when Obama, uh, during the campaign in 08, uh, we, because of his ties to Clinton, even though he didn't like Hillary Clinton, he was still very cl considered very close to Bill Clinton. Uh, he was neutral in that primary for a long time. Nobody really knew where he was going, but when, when Obama started to win um, uh, in caucuses and, 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 and certain primaries, of course, then uh, Emmanuel decided he was going to go with the winner, uh, the perceived winner, and he, and he uh, announced that he was supporting uh, Obama, and, and then, of course, uh, the rest is history. He winds up as the chief of staff. He's not very well liked here in Washington. Uh, he, he was... Uh, uh, known, uh, he was actually feared uh, by the Democrats and Republicans on the Hill as somebody who was, you know, basically uh, uh, just nuts. You know, he once sent a dead fish to a political opponent. He he once uh, took a steak knife and stabbed it in a table and said, "This one dead, dead, dead." Uh, about certain people he was, uh, you know, opposed to. So uh, again, it, we get back into the Sopranos type thing. The guy. Uh, the guys definitely uh, made no friends here in Washington. Um, uh, we had a, a strange incident with ex-Democratic uh, representative from New York, Eric Massa, who said that Obama confronted him in the shower naked uh, in the House of Representatives over some legislation. Category tonight, uh, this is an interesting one. Top ten signs that Rahm Emanuel is nuts. Mm. <laughs> Rahm Emanuel is the guy who's running uh, President Obama's White House yes. staff. He's, he's his buddy. He's his main man. He's the guy that takes care of everything. He's the brains behind the machine. Category, top ten signs he's nuts. You know what, what this is all about? Oh, what is this? A uh, New York congressman says he was confronted in a gym shower by a naked White House chief of staff, Rahm Emanuel, because he wasn't going to vote for the president's budget. Really? So I, I'm not sure here. I guess I get. Were, were they both naked? Were one of them just naked? 
anyway, it seemed inappropriate that a guy uh, would be naked and, you know, so. I punched him, you know, basically took his finger and punched him in the chest with his finger. And, and, and Massa said that Emmanuel's the kind of person that would strap his own mother onto uh, uh, the front of a, uh, a locomotive uh, to further his political career. And, and definitely what I've seen and heard of, uh, about Emmanuel here uh, would support that contention. Now, with Rahm Emanuel wanting to become mayor of Chicago, obviously he has ties to Mayor Daley and the Daley political machine. I also like to call it the Chicago Democratic machine. How did he uh, become uh, friends and uh, ally with Mayor Daley? And I also wanted to get your thoughts on William Daley, who was the Midwest chief of J.P. Morgan Chase, now becoming the new chief of staff in Washington, D.C. Did you, do you think there was a backroom deal between Obama, Emmanuel, and Mayor Daley? I think there's a lot of backroom deals between the machine in Chicago and the White House. It's not, it's not just between uh, Rahm Emanuel and the two Daley's, Richard Daley and, and William Daley, who's taking base his old job over as chief of staff. You've also got the whole, all that, that, all those other players, that whole uh, pickup basketball crowd, uh, Arnie Duncan and um, and Alexi Giannoulias. Uh, you've got also, uh, remember uh, Michelle Obama, the first lady, and her her financial connections to Valerie Jarrett, and Valerie Jarrett is basically running the show here uh, in the absence of a very strong chief of staff. Uh, that may change with Daly, uh, Bill Daly coming in. You talk about uh, just the whole Chicago influence coming into Washington, D.C., David Axelrod coming from Chicago, Arne Duncan. We obviously seen what he's done with the Chicago Public Schools, now the head of the uh, Department of Education, Valerie Jarrett. And it all ties in as well to that 2016 Olympic bid. It, it seemed like a lot of people in the daily political machine in Chicago were set to make big profits co with the Olympics coming to Chicago. Oh yeah, so so Valerie Jarrett uh, is involved in this, all these brownfields and these, uh, uh, for, uh, you know, these uh, this public land that they picked up for dirt cheap that would have been the venue for like the Olympic Village and other uh, sports venues for the uh, 2016 Olympics. And let's for, uh, not forget uh, Michael Scott, who was the head of the uh, Chicago School Board, who was also a real estate investor in this whole operation, but he was found floating in the Chicago River with a bullet in his head. Mr. Scott, you have sold, you have sold the community out, Mr. Scott. You sold the community out. You sold us out. You sold us out. You sold us out, Mr. Scott. Because you're giving false information. Wait, I was back there. I was asking this. Well, give me the right information right now. Give me the right information. Give me the right information right now. With you. I'm gonna give me the right information. You bring some cameras with that with you, all right? The county medical examiner has ruled the death of Chicago Public School Board President Michael Scott a suicide. But police are calling it simply a death investigation. An autopsy found Scott died of a self-inflicted gunshot to the head. Police officers were called to the banks of the Chicago River early this morning after someone spotted a body. A car registered to Scott was found in a nearby lot. Uh, they try to say it was suicide, but my uh, experience with with uh, th that type of thing here in, in politics in this town is uh, when it looks like suicide, it, it usually isn't. It's assisted suicide at the very least. Uh, so, uh, so Obama wings over to uh, on Air Force One to Copenhagen uh, to try to wrest control of the Olympics uh, uh, and give it to Chicago when, in fact, they already knew that Brazil, uh, which uh, South America never having had an Olympics, uh, 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 before uh, that Brazil was favored. Brazil had that thing wired, but nevertheless, they threw uh, good money after bad. Uh, Obama goes over there uh, on some very bad advice trying to get the Olympics. It did not happen. And uh, here, you know, we have what the state of Illinois and, and the city of Chicago uh, bankrupt, but they took this money that could have been spent on other things and, uh, on this, this, this wild goose chase trying to get the, the Olympics for Chicago. This was to enrich uh, enrich and, and, and fatten the bank accounts of people like Valerie Jarrett and the others who would have made a bundle uh, on this. It was really speculative, uh, speculative on their part, thinking that they were going to get the Olympics uh, in, in Chicago in 2016.
just a few days ago, Governor Pat Quinn decided uh, uh, in the state legislature to raise the income tax to 67 percent. Uh, another thing that Quinn, Rahm Emanuel, and the whole Democratic Chicago political machine in Chicago wants is casinos. Uh, Rob, Rod Lagojevich did not want that. Rahm Emanuel is a big uh, proponent for casinos. Discuss that in length, Wayne, and, uh, and why Chicago could turn into possibly Atlantic City or Detroit with uh, the casinos going into the big city. Yeah, I mean, and, and here's where you have to look at uh, the relationship between Obama and Emmanuel and people like Penny Pritzker, uh, who, the owner of the Hyatt Hotel chain. Uh, th these are the people that are be making out well if, if casinos go into Chicago because those hotels, those Hyatts are going to be uh, basic centers for these casinos. And um, so you look, you follow the money and this is what you find out. Yes, Blagojevich was trying to help out the um, thoroughbred racetrack owners, you know, if they've been around a long time. But he, he you know, the fact that he's, he was very neighborhood based, a very neighborhood based politician he didn't. He, he knew that what casinos do to neighborhoods, they they bring in drugs, they bring in crime, they bring in prostitution. He didn't want to have anything to do with it. Of course, that's not a problem for Emmanuel. I would say when you look at the people that are really backing uh, Emmanuel's campaign, you're going to find out it's the same money where Jack Abramoff uh, was getting his money from. The big casino interests, a lot of uh, Eastern European and Russian. Uh, uh, an Israeli organized crime elements involved in this. Uh, yes, they will turn Chicago into more of a Midwest Las Vegas with all the with all the sins associated with that. And uh, uh, but but you, you follow the money and you're, you you'll you'll get to the people the the big um, the big uh, uh, casino people uh, uh, that are responsible for uh, doing this to other cities. Uh, uh, in the United States around the world. Now here we go, Wayne. This is the the juicy part of what you found during your investigation here this summer in Chicago. Rahm Emanuel and Obama's secret past that they do not want anyone to know about, that they've even had a couple of assassinations uh, to some of the members of what you call the Down Low Club. Can you go in length about Obama and Emanuel's uh, past that the grand old man's country on North Clark Street in Chicago. Well, this goes back to the 2008 presidential campaign when an, ind an individual named Larry Sinclair uh, surfaced uh, with some uh, amazing, uh, with amazing story about an, uh, a relationship uh, he had with Obama back in 1999 and never thought about it till he saw Obama give the keynote address to the Democratic Convention in Boston and in uh, 2004, he, he recognized him. I, I paid no attention to it. As a matter of fact, I discounted that rumor in 08 because there was really no proof. Uh, and, 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 and being somebody that has followed dirty tricks in the past, especially those uh, concocted by uh, Karl Rove in the 2000 and 2004 election campaigns, I knew that you know th these people are out there with dirty tricks They'll try anything, so I discounted it. But uh, when I went to Chicago, I started talking to people about Obama's past, uh, this past that no one knows about, and also that of Emmanuel, this man's country, this bathhouse uh, uh, is mentioned. Uh, also, the uh, Trinity United Church of Christ, where Obama was a member, uh, the fact that uh, uh, that was being run as sort of a gay, uh, uh, married uh, gay, uh, a black um, male uh, a dating service uh, uh, for weekend get retreats. Uh, this all came out. And, and then we had the choir director, uh, Donald Young, brutally murdered in December of 07. Uh, a gangland hit style. And another individual named Larry Bland, uh, also a member of that church, also being murdered. Uh, there was a lot of information that... Uh, Donald Young was somehow hooked up with Obama, and they were just eliminating potential witnesses to Obama's uh, uh, gay lifestyle. Now, you mentioned that both Emmanuel and Obama in your article uh, dated back in 
May, uh, May 24th that they were lifetime members of Man's Country. Can you describe what Man's Country actually is uh, and why it's revered as uh, one of the uh, high upscaled uh, bathhouses in Chicago? Well, apparently it's a real seedy place. It's been around 30 years, but uh, even though it's seedy, it's still a, a place where people who have certain um, predilections uh, like to go because they know what they're getting. Uh, apparently, uh, Obama and lifetime membership is really paying, I guess, 10 bucks. Uh, uh, it gives you a lifetime membership. Uh, but uh, but uh, it, it's it, it, in, in the case of Obama, uh, apparently he... he his uh, interest is is older white guys, and he likes to be the receiver of attention. Uh, I, I, there was no information that Obama and Emmanuel uh, were ever connected to each other. Uh, that even that they may not have even been uh, members of this uh, uh, bathhouse at the at the very same uh, time period. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, this is the type of place that caters to this. Uh, these types of people. It wasn't the only uh, place. Later, I found out that uh, um, uh, Obama had also frequented uh, parties at a place called the Purple Hotel in Lincolnwood, which was uh, known as a hangout where they had these parties, uh, uh, afternoon parties, where there was drug use and a lot of uh, basically homosexual orgies taking place. So it wasn't just the bathhouse. There were other places mentioned by and this came from people in the in the gay community in Chicago people who would know uh, that you know they don't have any axe to grind except for the fact they probably think that uh, Obama and Emmanuel are big phonies with their you know their uh, their families and how they always talk about their families and all this type of thing uh, that they're they're total hypocrites and you can see that tough guy persona being brought forth by Emmanuel maybe mentally to ch to try to forget about his secretive past in the bathhouse you report in your article that Emmanuel joined man's country after he left the Clinton White House when he moved back to Chicago in 1998 and then again in his 2002 campaign yeah this past week uh, this past week uh, uh, Rosa DeLauro, who provided Rahm Emanuel with the townhouse he lived in while he was a member of Congress. This is back when the family uh, was in, uh, in Chicago. Now, when he became chief of staff, uh, he, um, he, he, he had a, a regular residence here with his family in Washington. But during this time frame when he was a member of Congress, he lived in this townhouse. And apparently during this, uh, during this time frame, um, um, this townhouse was wired with audio and, and video and, and may have been used to uh, tape secretly some of, of the cavortings in the townhouse, which I was told by very good sources included not only Emmanuel's use of the townhouse for these activities, but also Senator Barack Obama's use of the townhouse for these activities. Uh, this past week, Rosa DeLauro's longtime chief of staff, a woman named Ashley Turton, who's married to President Obama's chief of liaison to the House of Representatives, Dan Turton, uh, went out to her car at 5 o'clock in the morning uh, in her garage uh, in, in her townhouse in, on Capitol Hill, turned on the ignition, and the car caught fire somehow. Now, the police are saying it, it hit something and, 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 and caught fire, but uh, uh, she was burned, burned up in the car. She died. It's so sad. Uh, it's someone I know very well, Ashley Turton. She was a congressional staffer for a long time. She's now a lobbyist for an energy company uh, that was apparently being bought out by another company. Uh, Progress Energy was in some sort of talks with Duke Energy. So she had to go to work very early, uh, from what I'm told, uh, this morning. And somehow her ca car caught on fire on Capitol Hill, uh, and she tragically died. Uh, uh, fire officials are just telling us generally uh, that there was a fire early this morning. They're not confirming the name, but I've gotten that from other sources. Uh, it's, it's strangely, she's married. Married to Dan Turton, a, a senior White House aide here who works on the president's legislative liaison staff. Uh, and my understanding is that uh, Dan Turton, her husband, uh, and their three children were in the home uh, when the when the car uh, caught on fire in their garage. And the whole, a lot of homes on Capitol Hill are set up in such a way 
that the garage is behind the house, so it's not even directly connected. He can't really see it from the house, so his neighbors uh, knocked on the door and told him that the garage was on fire. He thought his wife was already at work because she had to go to work so early this morning, uh, and he, he secured their three children, all, I'm told, under the age of five or, or six years old. Uh, and got them to safety, and then only learned later that uh, his wife was in the car uh, and burned to death. So, I mean, it's just tragic. I've known her about 15 years from when I was covering Capitol Hill, and when I heard this after what happened in Tucson this weekend, I, I just can't believe it. So, um, we're, we're being told by the Washington police that this was a freaky accident. Uh, I don't believe in freaky accidents in this town when it has to do with somebody who was a uh, a chief of staff to Deloro, who was providing Emmanuel with this house, uh, this townhouse where he lived, uh, and somebody who's uh, that close to the White House. I don't believe in freaky accidents. They don't. They don't happen usually. Uh, this was a scene right out of one of these Hollywood political thrillers. Uh, so I think uh, was this an attempt to clean things up for Emmanuel, so there's no problems. Uh, well, we don't know yet, but uh, we definitely have a suspicious death here in Washington. Somebody who may have known about Emmanuel and what he was doing in this townhouse the time he was a member of Congress here. And Wayne, you've had multiple sources reading your articles throughout the summer confirming what you've just mentioned about Emmanuel and Obama's uh, secretive past, including members of uh, the Democratic Party and the Congressional Black Congress, correct? Uh, yeah, I've talked to people in the Congressional Black Caucus when they first encountered uh, Senator Obama. He was the only senator who was a member of the Black Caucus. They they noted, you know, some things about him that just weren't, you know, they you know they were they thought were odd, like the the clear nail polish that he was wearing. Um, you know, when I I asked I asked one um, black member of the caucus, well, you know, I've been told that that could be a metrosexual thing, and this member said. Where I come from, that ain't that ain't metrosexual. That's homosexual. So the 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 the, the, the members of the Black Caucus were well uh, uh, alerted to this uh, fact that that what you see with Obama on television isn't really uh, the the real Obama. And we look at you look at the guy's past, and of course there are so many question marks. And I am not uh, I'm not one of these birth certificate people. I think he was born in Hawaii. I think the White House loves that because uh, it's a diversion. Uh, it sends people off on a tangent when, in fact, the real issue is uh, his passport record. What, who did he really work for when he was supposed to be at Occidental and Columbia? Uh, what was all the foreign travel really about? And who did the family, mom, grandfather, grandmom, stepdad, who did they really work for back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s? Wayne, you also had in your July 19th article that the White House went into damage control once you released this story, and also the Globe newspaper uh, picked up on your report and your investigation. Uh, can you describe what the White House was actually doing to try to silence uh, the information being brought forth about Rahm Emanuel and President Obama? Well, they did. It's it's what the White House will do in any with any administration. They don't like anything negative, especially something of this nature. I mean, it happened back in the Bush administration too, when when I found out that Cheney uh, had had dealings with the 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 late D.C. Madam back when he was the head of Halliburton. They try to put these fires out. Um, uh, you know, they'll say, "Oh, it's a it's vicious conspiracy theory." They would rather than be ignored, but. Uh, they will. Uh, they will try to put these fires out, uh, make it sound like these are just uh, uh, vicious rumors, without any basis of fact. And, and uh, this is what they they normally do. It's not unusual. You would almost expect it from any White House. Again, we're here with Wayne Matson. Wayne Matson report. Dot com. Wayne, with this being said of the shady past between Rahm Emanuel, uh, mayor candidate of Chicago, and President Barack Obama. These two candidates, how perfect are they in terms of being blackmailed? Are they the perfect uh, blackmailed candidates? I think so. I mean, but I, I mean, when we we think in terms of blackmail, we think maybe some foreign intelligence agency might be the be the blackmail agent. But I think in this case, it's it's our own government has the goods on them to keep them in line, 
to make sure they don't uh, they do exactly what they're expected to do. I think this is primarily the case with Obama. Although with Rahm Emanuel, I think it's quite clear he may have ties to the Israeli intelligence service Mossad. Whether they would put him in a blackmail position or not is, I think, I, you know, we just don't know. He may just be a loyal, a very loyal to uh, to working for them. I mean, as a veteran of the Israel Defense Force, he obviously has had past connections with them. But what, but but especially with Obama, I think the blackmail for him uh, comes from. Uh, the agencies he, uh, the one agency that I think uh, he absolutely worked for uh, in the past, and that's the CIA. Uh, back when he was uh, uh, graduated from Columbia, he went to work for Business International Corporation in Manhattan, which was a CIA front. It was sold to the Economist Intelligence Unit, which was pretty much part of Britain's MI6 in 1986. You also mentioned in your April 26th article, uh, Bush lame duck eavesdropping. Can you discuss that and how it all ties around uh, President Obama wanting to, to do investigations on torture, but then again, uh, the Bush White House, knowing this information, had uh, pretty much put a gun to uh, Obama's head in terms of blackmail? Well, that's right. One of the things we saw with the Bush administration with wireless, uh, um, a warrantless wiretapping was it was able to gather together an awful lot of uh, intelligence without a criminal predicate, including political intelligence using the NSA. And, and of course, all this information gathered on, on, on these presidential candidates, including Obama, was used uh, on them. And in the case of Obama, we saw every one of his campaign promises he, he, he basically reneged on, uh, uh, closing Guantanamo, uh, the torture, uh, uh, even even some fundamental issues that were core Democratic Party uh, issues. He, he basically uh, uh, sounded more like a, a Republican than a Democrat. And I would note that last, uh, 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 a year ago, this past November, this was November of 2009, uh, George H.W. Bush and Jeb Bush paid an unannounced visit to the White House to meet with Obama. The White House said, oh, it was a mere courtesy call. Well, courtesy calls of that nature are normally not done in this town unless there's a real reason for it. Uh, you usually don't get ex-presidents to the White House unless it's a state funeral or some state dinner involving some foreign head of state. And even then, the presence of a former president is rare. Uh, so there was much more to this meeting, I think, than meets the eye. And I wouldn't be surprised if the old man, old man Bush and Jeb Bush had in their possession uh, some of the information that was gathered uh, from these wiretaps, because we saw right after that uh, Obama governing more as a Republican president than a, as a Democratic president. During uh, the spring, we had the BP oil spill, one of the most cata the catastrophic events uh, to the Gulf of Mexico in recent history, comparing to the uh, Exxon Valdez spill in Alaska. But again, we go back to the blackmail and the cover-up behind this BP oil spill stemming from Rahm Emanuel's shady past in his uh, free condo in D.C. And again, you mentioned Stan Greenberg, who is a lobbyist for BP. Let's go into length about that. And you also mentioned in one of your articles about uh, Hammond, Indiana, and a potential spill from BP out there. Well, yeah, I mean, we, we see, uh, we see what the, the whole potential for blackmail you know, Emmanuel staying at a townhouse free of charge, which should have gotten him hauled before the House Ethics Panel. Uh, I mean, they, they, got, they got Charlie Rangel for a lot less than that. I mean, they didn't get Charlie Rangel because he was living in a free townhouse provided by a BP contractor. But nevertheless, they went after Charlie Rangel. They seem to go after certain people, but uh, certain others are, are, are left alone. So here we have uh, Obama basically allowing... BP to be be in control of the entire uh, uh, aftermath of the of the oil disaster in the Gulf, uh, unprecedented. Um, uh, it would been like during Exxon Valdez uh, that, that the president would have said, "Okay, Exxon, you're in charge of the cleanup rather than than you know the EPA or the Coast Guard." But this is what Obama does, uh, where you've got the Coast Guard taking orders from BP rather than the other way around, and and of course, you had the Coast Guard Commandant, Thad Allen, 
had already been in negotiations to go work for BP after he retired as as commandant of the Coast Guard. So the whole thing the whole thing was uh, uh, something that looked like it was done because of this connection with uh, uh, Emmanuel and the the, the uh, Rosa DeLauro Greenberg condo and the fact Greenberg uh, lobbies for BP and 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 now you know this other information about the the condo may have been wired up for video and and sound and and God knows what information uh, BP and others had uh, on uh, not only Emmanuel but also on Barack Obama when he would use that same condo when he was uh, in the Senate when you know Michelle. And the kids were out of town uh, for uh, for uh, certain activities. Weren't BP big contributors to the Obama uh, campaign back when he was running for president? Yeah, BP gave uh, gave uh, Obama more than any of the other uh, uh, oil companies. And, and you look at you look at Obama, you know, and the Wall Street contributions. Uh, it's quite clear that um, he was pretty well favored by that money that Wall Street money, so it's really shouldn't come as any shock that he puts in charge at the White House as Chief of Staff, Rahm Emanuel, who came from that same type of thing with, you know, the $16 million he made. And, and, and not only that, but, but uh, uh, also um, uh, uh, Emanuel was also on the board of Freddie Mac, uh, and we know that that was rife with all kinds of corruption, too. And they also received bailout funds. Finally, on BP, Nalco, based out of Naperville, Illinois, and their Corexic 9500. If you simply look up their material safety data sheet, it will list that the, the, chemi- that the dispersant is highly toxic, banned in the European Union, yet they were allowed to use this in the BP oil spill, going back to the entire cover-up and blackmail between Obama and Emmanuel, correct? Absolutely, and, and you've got ticking time bombs like you mentioned Hammond the BP plant there we already had a there was a spill not BP but there was a spill in Michigan that leaked into uh, Lake Michigan but we we just see the EPA the problem with these regulatory agencies like the EPA and all the other others often called the fourth branch of government is that the regulatory agencies are now controlled by the industries they're supposed to regulate so so uh, nothing has changed under Obama really the regulators are controlled by the by the industries they're supposed to regulate, and and certainly that's the case with the EPA and 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 some of these petrochemical and oil companies. It's quite clear, Wayne, with Rahm Emanuel as White House Chief of Staff for the last two years, that he is not eligible to run for mayor of Chicago. Yet the election board in Chicago approved his uh, stature in the ballot for the upcoming election. Uh, we've talked on the phone several times and we've discussed our uh, theories or on what could happen to Chicago with Emmanuel as the mayor of Chicago. How dangerous could it be for the second city to have Rahm Emanuel as mayor of Chicago? Well, I remember what happened when uh, you had America's mayor, Rudy Giuliani, a very corrupt mafiosi type in New York. I mean, we had 9-11 happen. Uh, remember that that incident occurred on election day, uh, and, and 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 Giuliani actually tried to extend his term as mayor, uh, like he uh, like he's like uh, Silvio Berlusconi in Italy. He tried to he tried to like just violate the city charter in New York and and, and stay on as mayor. Uh, I mean, this is unprecedented. What some of these people will try to do. So now we look at Chicago. Uh, you've got uh, Emmanuel will try to take on that mantle because I think Emmanuel's got bigger ambitions beyond uh, mayor of Chicago. He, I think he's always, uh, he, since he can't be Speaker of the House, he may be interested in running for President of the United States, just like Giuliani was interested in running for President of the United States. But uh, but what we m- might see in Chicago is, is, is Emmanuel becoming the new America's mayor. And look, they control, you know, he controls, he has access. Look at the brother. Uh, the super agent. They have all kinds of ties to the media. They can make that reality happen. All they got to do is uh, snap their fingers. And, and, and so you got Rahm Emanuel, no longer this tough, um, this thuggish guy. You know, he's America's mayor. And uh, I would point out that the, the old Sears Tower is now owned by uh, Larry Silverstein, who also, of course, had the uh, lease on the World Trade Center. So I don't like uh, what's coming together. 
uh, in this perfect storm uh, uh, in Chicago. I think there's a lot of things that could happen because you've got the you got the organized crime element with the casinos. You got Emmanuel; he's dirty. His ties with Israeli intelligence and the Israeli government and the Likud party. They try to always say, "Oh, he's a liberal Israel." You know, he's he's liberal. He doesn't like the Likud. You know, that's that's a that's a shell game. People should ignore. Uh, uh, and uh, you got and, and Silverstein owning the old Sears Tower. You put that all together, I think you got a recipe for potential for, for another potential 9/11 in Chicago, one that will propel Emmanuel to uh, a superstar status and possible. Uh, national uh, political office. I also want to point out during the summer of 2010, the Army National Guard, along with troops from Poland, were conducting military drills in the Chicagoland area, including Toyota Park out in Bridgeview, Illinois, where they were conducting chem possible chemical spills, plane attacks, <coughs> pretty much uh, drills for a potential yeah. terrorist attack. So, Wayne, with what you're saying, it actually is coming to fruition in terms of the uh, National Guard doing their training exercises. I recall going on the train and I would see near Bensonville, Illinois, uh, National Guard conducting uh, checkpoint drills. So what you're saying is actually correct, Wayne, and, and let's hope that nothing bad happens to Chicago. Finally, well, let's Wayne, hope not, but... No, go ahead. Yeah, I, let's hope not, right, because it's America City and 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 uh, although New York was bad enough, that Chicago is more at the heartland of America than New York is. Wayne, final thoughts with you. Anything that we've missed in this investigation on Rahm Emanuel and the Chicago Democratic machine, and uh, anything else you would like to cover on Rahm Emanuel? Uh, again, I would I would go back to look at uh, some of his er uh, earlier campaigns for Congress in the fifth district. I uh, uh, I spoke to many people who ran against them, Democrats and Republicans and independents, and uh, it was quite clear that th this guy is a dirty operator. Uh, he will be as 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 dirty uh, a mayor of Chicago as you've ever seen with anybody in the past, and that includes the Dailies, uh, because of, of this uh, involvement he has with uh, uh, casinos. Uh, foreign intelligence operatives and uh, and 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 some of this uh, senior side um, of, um, of of Chicago politics, including his um, his association with the real estate developers, uh, the same people that try to uh, get the Olympics. Because let's re remember, as chief of staff, Emmanuel gave the final green light for Obama to go to Copenhagen and try to get the Olympics. So he also, Emmanuel, thought he could make money on that. And uh, so that, that money uh, uh, taints him as well as uh, Valerie Jarrett, uh, the late school board president, uh, and, and, and the other individuals who were part of that, including Michelle Obama, I should add. Wayne, how, you, you mentioned that you wanted to challenge Chicago Sun-Times, Chicago Tribune, and the Daily Herald to try to pick up your story and see if they can do some investigation. Yet, from your report in the summer, none of those papers have really done anything. None of the TV yeah. networks in Chicago, ABC7, NBC5, CBS2, WGN, none of them have really picked up this story or have done any investigation on Rahm Emanuel. How important is it for you and for the voters of Chicago to become aware of Rahm Emanuel? manual and prevent uh, catastrophe from happening in the second city it's really important and I hate to say it but the the grand old days of, um, of Chicago newspapers the the Tribune and the Sun Times uh, uh, when the reporters used to hang out at the Billy Go Tavern uh, uh, down uh, uh, downtown Chicago I think are over with uh, this has a lot to do with the you know what's happening in the newspapers across the country but uh, the fact is that Sam Zell uh, owns the, uh, you know, took over the Tribune and basically emaciated it. Uh, the Sun Times was emaciated by uh, Hollinger and, uh, and 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 Conrad Black when he owned it. Uh, they've never recovered. Uh, there is no independent. Uh, you know, the days of Mike Royko and and these others are, are over with. And and uh, I only see the internet. Uh, some of the blogs. 
uh, picking up the slack uh, to do that, but there's a resource issue. Uh, it's not cheap to go after some of this corruption, but I would hope that people uh, in Chicago uh, uh, try to get as much information as they can from the Internet uh, on, on these connections uh, with Emmanuel and uh, the Obama uh, uh, group, uh, Axelrod, who used to you know, work for uh, the uh, Chicago uh, Tribune uh, and still has some connections there. But uh, the but the the days of a vibrant Chicago press to go after this corruption uh, are unfortunately over over with and a and a, a thing of the past. Wayne, fire out your website for those who are interested in what you do and would like to read some of your articles. Yes, it's WayneMatsonReport dot com, and I started it because we also here in Washington have lost the muckraking spirit of Jack Anderson and Drew Pearson, the Washington merry-go-round, uh, even people before their time, uh, going back to H.L. Mencken and, and, and the work he did in Baltimore, uh, which covered Washington, too, Washington politics. But that, that, that this has long since kind of uh, disappeared. Uh, we don't have any muckraking spirit. So I tried, and when I started this website in 05, to bring back the spirit of the Washington merry-go-round, uh, which basically helped bring down people from Joseph McCarthy uh, to Richard Nixon and Watergate and Iran Contra in the 1980s. It, it, it helped expose a lot of these things. But as long as these politicians and these criminals think they can get away with this stuff, because there's no active independent press, they will do it. And, uh, and that's why the founders of this country uh, decided it was important uh, to put in the uh, First Amendment freedom of the press uh, because in those days the press was actually not major newspapers. It was they were much, the press was much like websites and blogs today. They were uh, pamphlets, and, and 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 people talk, well, this stuff isn't sourced today. Well, it wasn't sourced then, but the founders thought it was important uh, enough to protect that, even even though it wasn't sourced. And a lot of those pamphlets were scurrilous in nature. They thought it was important to protect it. And, uh, and, and I think that's what we need to try to do uh, while we still have the Internet. And believe me, there's, there's work being done by Obama's guy, Cass Sunstein, to try to end the Internet. And his other friend, uh, 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 Jenna Chowski, the head of the FCC, uh, when, they, when they get together and conspire, uh, we may not see uh, the Internet uh, the way we see it today. By the way, Cass Sunstein has Chicago connections from the University of Chicago. So yeah. that Chicago merry go round yeah. Uh, working well out in D.C. Wayne Matson, thank you so much for joining us live in Washington, D.C. God bless and uh, stay safe out in D.C. with your reporting. Okay, thank you. That's Wayne Matson of WayneMatsonReport.com. I'm Julio Rausseo. Thank you so much for joining us on this Reality Report special investigation on Rahm Emanuel. It's up to you to get this news out and prevent what could be the new mafia boss of Chicago. I'm Julio Rauseo saying peace, love, and God bless. And don't forget to stick around for more of the Reality Report on RTR.org. So long. <music>